Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Aaron. Aaron is from Australia, so let's see what Aaron has to say. Enjoy the interview. So, hello Aaron, how are you? Fantastic, yourself? I'm very well. Thanks so much for taking the time this morning for the interview. Thank you. No worries, thanks for the invite. So tell me, how's your morning going so far? Uh, interesting. So I got my son Jaden off, no, I got Tyler off to school and then Jaden, I took to school, but then he's complaining of being sick. So literally we got to the classroom, turned back around and come back. So he's in bed with the cat because the cat got uh, its vaccination booster thing yesterday. So both okay. Jaden and Chi Chi, the cat, are both cuddled up in bed. They're relaxing. Yeah, well, I'll do this. So that's all right. They're chilled out. They're happy. <laughs> do you consider yourself to be a, a, a day person, a morning person, or a late night person? Me, early mornings. I, I was awake about six o'clock this morning until Tyler came in about quarter past six and he got up. So then I'll get up. I, I'm at that stage in life where it's like after 9 30 at night, I'm like super tired. I'm like ready for bed. But I'm like, yeah, morning, morning person, big time. So tell me where are you from, Aaron? I'm from Perth, Western Australia. I live in Secret Harbour, which is like next to the beach. So beautiful area. Yeah, no, Australia's awesome. And that's the place where you were born and raised? Yeah, I was born here in WA. I was raised in Dwellingham, which is like a little country town. There's only like, I think, 363 people at the time that I was growing up there. So wow. basically... Yeah, grew up in dwelling up, this little country town. And then as soon as I finished high school, moved straight to Fremantle, which is a bit more like city-ish. And then okay. lived there for about 10 years, then moved down to Secret Harbour. So I've been down here by the beach for the last 15 years or something like that. Wow. How far are you from the beach? As the crow flies, you're probably looking about one and a half Ks. It's probably about like a five minute drive. Wow. So tell me something interesting about the place where you're living right now. Tell me something that uh, stands out compared with other places in Australia. Sega Harbour is safe. I've, I've never been broken into here yet. Where we are now is like, yeah, really safe area. Um, uh -huh. There's no real losers. Like, um, yeah, beautiful people. There's, yeah, the people, are really, so the people are really nice. The streets are clean. No homelessness. Um, yes, it's beautiful. Like I said, the beach is really nice. We got a golf course just down the road as well. So we're a golf course estate. So lots of the houses surround the golf course. Um, okay. I literally live across the road from the primary school. So literally I can just walk my kids to school and back. Oh. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Good setup for this stage in my life. Are you closer to Sydney or closer to Melbourne? Opposite side of the country. So if you look at, at Australia, this is this being the West Coast, this being the East Coast, Sydney's but like here on the map, and where if you draw a line from the east all the way across to the west, we're about there. Okay. So we're on the same parallel or latitude or longitude or whatever whatever that is, lat, lat, same latitude pretty much, but opposite side of the country. Amazing. And what do you do for work for living? Operate a low loader, which is a um so picture a dump truck in the mines, take the tray off and put a big tray on the back and I'll pick up like the dozers or the um, drill rigs, the, the machinery that needs to go up to the workshop or needs to go to the other side of the pit. So basically I work in mine, a gold mine where obviously they're um, digging up the ground to try to find the gold that's in it. So I operate the machinery. So like the low loader, I also do the rock breaker, which is like an excavator with like a jackhammer on it. And that's wow. like for the big rocks that didn't break up during the blast, I smash up those rocks, make it smaller, so then we can put it through the crusher, get crushed up, and then um, they can look for the gold in there. Yeah. Amazing. My God, that's great. Okay, Aaron, so during the journey, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? Yep. So before we start our journey, will in the magic box, how would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself or something that not many people know about you? 
Yeah, it's a bit. Um, I'm an author, so I've wrote three novels. I'll show you two of them. Oh. So that's two of the books. I've got another one, which is just FIFO, and I changed name. It's Aaron Weston on there because it's all like the um, crazy stuff that happens in in Australia. We've got a big fly in, fly out community, which is basically like what I do at the moment is I drive down to my site. I live there for the week and I work where I live, basically. So I live in a camp. I think it's a couple of thousand man camp or 4,000 man camp or whatever. And we just live in this one little village. Then we drive to work, work in the mine, and then drive home and we live there for that week. And then we come back home. I live in normal life for a week. But yeah, I used to do fly and fly out where you literally have to fly up to the, the camp, live there for two to three weeks, then fly home and then live your normal life for one week. You just keep doing that. Two weeks on, one week off or whatever. And there's lots of crazy dodgy stuff that happens up in the mine site. So you got um, like drugs, alcohol, but then you got like suicide, you've got um, depression, so you got all good and bad stuff and stuff like that. So I thought I'll put that into like a f interesting book, a funny book. Oh. Well, yeah, funny and interesting. Yeah. So I wrote a story called FIFO and because it's the dodgy stuff, I changed my last name from White to Weston as author. And yeah, I wrote this funny book and then I got into the swing of it. I already wrote seven kids books before then, which I'll show some of them in a sec. So I knew how to write a book, how to publish it. And yes, yeah, so I wrote the first FIFO novel. And then I thought, what I'll do is I'll take a couple of characters out of that one and give them major roles in the next book. So first one's called FIFO, what really happens after the plane takes off? Because lots of people don't know about all this dodgy stuff and crazy stuff. And um, yeah, and the second one's called FIFO 2, how a drug dealer became a FIFO worker. So one of the main characters in the second story like started out being a drug dealer and the other guy was a bodyguard for that drug dealer. And then they got sick of the whole drug game and all the stuff that comes along with it. So they end up getting into the mining, which is good money anyway, but, and it's a lot safer and it's legal. So yeah, so they up, went up to the mines and it's their story. And the number three is uh, five for three. There's always three sides to a story, which is, you know, you got, you if, you and I were telling a story, it's your truth, my truth, and what really happened, because we all have our own version of events. Because in the first book, something crazy happens to the main character, but then in the third book, you actually hear the other person's point, point of view or side of their story, and then you can make, you can figure out your own way, like, who's actually, what, what the real truth is. But yeah, all three books, the stories cross over. So you got Mick's story in the main character in the first book, he meets Jono, who gets him the job in the mines here in the timeline. But Jono's story starts back here in the other book. So all these stories cross over. It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. So that's actually quite good. And yeah, the kids' books, I'll show you some of that. So it's got like Australian Surf Lifesavers, where I've actually partnered up with Surf Lifesaving Australia for that one. There you go. Wow. Uh, Australian paramedics, Australian police vehicles, a coloring book. Actually, I actually drew all these pictures of the machines. Well, this one's been used, so the kids have coloured it in. Oh, but the reason I made the kids' books was um, I made the first one, Dave the Dumb Truck, which it was basically so parents could show the kids what they do at work. I made it so that I could show my son what I do at work because not, there was nothing out there. And then once I figured out how to make a kids' book. I did another mining one and then I ended up doing one for other, I was a firefighter at one stage, like a volunteer firefighter. So I made yeah. a kid's book about firefighting as well. And then yeah, did the old police ones and all the other ones. So yeah, I like to, I made all the book, the kid's books. So parents and grandparents and basically anyone can show their kids what they or people in the community do at work. So I like to educate, I like to educate, entertain and yeah, all that type of stuff. I want to make, kind of want to make a difference in this world. I think we should all so, sort of strive to do, make some sort of difference. Like you're doing with your podcast, you're introducing all these people from different countries and stuff. This is what we should be doing. We should be making making a difference, doing something. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the things. 
No, I love that. I think, you know, as you said, I think uh, when you do something with passion, when you put it out something that people appreciate, I think is the best way of expressing ourselves and connect with people around the world as well. Amazing. Great. Yeah, totally agree. Erod, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Yes, bring it on. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. I've got him my best friend. run the fun questions what i'm going to do i'm just going to play a song now just for us to relax a bit before the first question okay yeah amazing let's do it right so before we start the game during the journey if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason you don't want to answer always can change okay yeah right first question is what makes you feel discouraged if someone's putting you down, I guess, like basically if you're trying to do something and someone's telling you you're doing a crap job, then it's like, why waste my time to do this for you if you're just going to put it down? If you feel like you're doing, yeah, if you feel like you're doing something for somebody that's not going to appreciate it, I feel probably feel discouraged for like I'm wasting my time. I don't like wasting my time. So yeah, basically if you're not feeling appreciated, what's, what's the point? That's probably the answer. Tell me something, when, when you analyze yourself, when you think about yourself, what's the best part of being here? What do you like the most about being yourself? I'm a nice, happy person. I'm probably the nicest person I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm happy if I'm allowed to be happy. Um, I'm fit, like my body's not all, like I went through one stage where my knee was all sore and back was sore and everything like that. But because I work out lots, my body's fit and I, uh, I'm able to do things without being in pain. So that's probably one of the best things about being me, yeah, I guess. And you, <laughs> <laughs> you always have this way of being very happy, uh, this positive attitude. You always being this way? I reckon I probably have 99% of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Hey, next question is, where do you see yourself in five years time? So five years, the kids will be in, both in high school. Still be here in Secret Harbor. I've got no interest in moving out of here. I, I think because when my kids no, like when I finished high school and stuff, I moved out of dwelling up. So I had like the house that I was in for all the way from year two up to high school and it's all the house I grew up in and then mum moved somewhere else and then when I go visit her after high school didn't feel like home so what I want to do is I want to keep this house that my kids have grown up in and they can they can keep living here or they can come back and forth it's always at home they won't be visiting me and somewhere else so in five years I'll definitely be here in Sigur Harbor I'll still be mining I love my job I'll be there until I retire at 65 or whatever. So basically, I'll be in the same work and house. Hopefully, I'll be doing a lot more, maybe more wakeboarding or more adventure stuff, like in my free time. And I wouldn't mind doing like maybe like a YouTube channel or some sort of TikTok channel where you do fun activities. Or it, whether it's motorbike riding or just checking out the different things around the place. I don't know, that's that's in the works. So what am I doing something along the entertaining uh, content creation type thing? Amazing, very good. Next question, let's do it. Right, so um, before the next question, Aaron, tell me, what do you like the most about your job? What's the best the best part of it? And the opposite, what do you find most challenging? All right, the people are awesome. I've been mining for 20 years. Yeah, I think back on 20 years now, I started when I was 20. I'm 41 now. So yeah, basically 21 years I've been mining. And um, you normally have like some idiots that you, there's only like a couple that you don't like working with. 
but how we got the crew at the moment there's no idiots like i'll get along with everybody and it yeah supervisors other people so the, the co-workers are great the job itself is good i operate the fl the float the low loader like i tell you which is it's a crazy job i'm locked in third gear so when i'm traveling on the, along the flat i can only go 20 k's an hour max so everything's nice and cruisy and there's no real pressure in this job in other mining jobs to be like come on let's get that the wheels turning let's hurry it up that but then you're like you sort of you feel rushed and you, that's when you end up stuffing up whereas this company is more about not hurting yourself not causing excess paperwork so just do your job do it safely and then you can go home so that's why i like i don't i don't like being rushed i like know what i'm doing and i'm a bit of a routine person so i like knowing what i'm doing each day so i'll just tick along and we get a bit of standby so you can watch some netflix and stuff like that and just chill yes yeah, so that's what i like about the, the thing uh, and the money is really good we get pretty good pay what i don't like about the place because i'm not really phased too much about other what other people there's lots of um you get a lot of people that whinge but they're going to whinge no matter where they are. They're, they're whingers. It's as simple as that. They're never going to be happy in life. So I guess that's a negative thing. People whinging over something that doesn't need to be whinged about. But that doesn't yeah. really affect me. But that's probably the only negative one that I could see. Yeah, see. that's my answer. Okay. All right. Next question is, what three things are you most grateful for? Wife and kids good job and living in a safe environment wow wow saying that um what's the you know i can see your eyes shine when you talk about your kids what's the best part of being a dad just felt emotional there all of a sudden um just gonna compose myself. Basically, giving them a fantastic life. Um, what you feel you miss out on, you give them. Uh huh. I'm not really an emotional per person, but maybe I keep everything bottled up. So then when it comes out, it comes out. But probably just. Um, best thing about being dad is probably oh, like is lots of proud moments and um like seeing them get like um merit certificates or uh tyler's like a student counselor so you know he's going well in life and stuff like that so he's like a leader in the school on that um yeah just know that they're good polite people so that's probably pretty cool amazing okay Next question, let's do it. Okay, hey, next question is, right, if you could meet yourself when you were 15 years old again, which advice would you give to yourself at the time? Yeah, I've thought about this before as well. So I'd be like, you're gonna hear this thing called Bitcoin, buy that as soon as you can when it's cheap as, and then as soon as you hear about this guy, Elon Musk, about to buy into it, like sell it as soon as the price is high because it's going to drop afterwards. And then you can, well, you'll be set then. Uh, don't worry about investment properties. Just buy one house and like just tr try to pay that off because it wastes a lot of time and money in with investment properties. Um, travel heaps, go on lots of Kentucky tours. I've done one and I wish I did more because as soon as you get wife and kids and stuff like that, like your traveling's a lot harder. So travel heaps, I was really fixated on making money. That's why I invested in the houses and stuff ever since I was young. So probably more focus on memories, like try to experiences, like make ex fun, adventurous experiences in your life as opposed to just chasing money all the time. And yeah, probably invest in facebook and stuff like that in the share market when that when that first comes about so i give them those investment tips and yeah so invest travel heaps and yeah just make lots of life experience fun experiences yeah 
When you think about um, your childhood memories, what's the the most um, memorable memory that comes to your mind? I thought this before when you, I think I looked at one of your other interviews or something and that one popped up. I was like, I can't really think of one. I used to go dirt bike riding a fair bit. So that was a bit of fun. Yeah. I think it's the simple things like spending time with your parents and stuff. Like mum would pick me up from soccer. There was four of us kids, but mum would pick me up from soccer. It was just her and me in the car. And we'd go past the bottle shop. She'd get a bourbon and Coke and I'll get a can of cool drink and a packet of chips. It's that one-on-one -on -one time that you never uh -huh. get. So I can that. That's probably pretty cool. But that's probably why I spend so much time with my kids, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yeah, I'll probably use that as a memory. Which person in your family are more close to besides your wife and your kids? Oh, probably mum. Oh, sweet. What's the biggest difference between you and your mum and the biggest similarity? We look pretty similar. Well, except for she's got the long hair and she doesn't have the facial hair like me. But when we were young, we used to have the both, both have the long blonde hair type thing. Well, wow. so look, Sam, I got the same laugh as well. We got like a nice, loud, infectious laugh. Uh, differences. She probably complains a lot more than what I would. Like, she'd probably be one of those people. She's a positive person, but she probably. Yeah, she's more positive than she's negative, but the, I'm trying to think of a difference. But she'd probably complain more than what I would about stuff that doesn't need to complain about. Amazing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, I have three questions left, okay? Let's do it. Yeah. Before the next question, Nero, uh, of course, we got connected through TikTok, yeah? I was checking your yeah. TikTok videos, you know, and you expressed there a lot of positivity, you are dancing, you are, you know, there's a video about the 80s, you were born in the 80s, raised in the 90s, and party on the, the thousand, 2000s. Um, so tell me, what's the biggest motivation or inspiration for you to create your, your TikTok videos? Oh, it's an entertaining thing, really. Uh, why I started the whole TikTok thing was to pr I did all the books and I wanted a platform to promote the books. But then I found that it's really hard to like promote stuff anyway. So, And I was getting some momentum with entertaining people that way anyway, just like through the normal TikTok algorithm, the normal TikTok post. So I was like, oh, I'll stuff the books. I'll just do the, um, do the normal TikTok posts anyway. And I find them fun. People enjoying them. If they ever stop enjoying them, I'll just stop doing it. But it's, it's good actually knowing that somebody like you get messages. Oh, I just laugh so hard from like that post or something like that. Or oh, that made my day. And it's good actually to make other people's days. Oh, they, there's one thing. Like um, when I made all the books, because like I said, it's so hard to sell them and stuff like that. I actually spent fifteen hundred bucks out of my own money to turn uh, FIFO the first one into like an audio book, so people can just have it for free. So if you, anyone listening and want want a funny um audio book, just look up FIFO by Aaron Weston on YouTube or Spotify, and boof, is there you can enjoy the book. It's about hundred and fifty minutes long. But yeah, it's funny as, and it's free. I see. Okay. Next question is, what's the best advice have you ever given to someone? To travel heaps. I went to a funeral, my granddad's, granddad's funeral, a couple of breaks ago, so a couple of months ago, and I saw my nephew, who I hadn't seen in a while, who's, I think he's 20 or 21 now, something around that age. And I, I told him, go do Kentucky tours, go travel, create memories and stuff like that. So basically the same advice that I would have given a 15 year old self, I gave to him. So I think that's probably the best advice. And also to, oh, who did I say that to? Might have even said it to him or years ago or said it to somebody else. Basically, I like, save at least 20% of your income. So as soon as you start working, you get paid a hundred bucks, save at least 20 bucks of that put it into a bank account and don't charge it. Just keep doing that. By the time you're 40 or 50, whatever, you're made. You're, you're sorted. Wow. Good advice. I like that. <laughs> Ready for another one? 
Yeah, go for it. Two questions left. Let's do it. What are you drinking, by the way? That there is a um, little bit of milk with coffee, honey, and the hot water just to stir it up. So it's like a coffee to about there. Then it's all coconut water. And then it's top of ice cream. Oh, delicious. Next yeah. question is, who in your family you trade place with and why, if you could choose, for any reason? Tyler, my my 11-year-old. Is he 11? Yeah. Yeah, my 11-year-old. Because kids have a mate. They don't have to do anything. I pay for everything. I, Well, my wife works now as well, so she pays as well. So the, us parents pay for everything. All they have to do is enjoy life and have fun. And it doesn't look like he's doing any real hard schoolwork at the moment. So he just gets to play with his friends and muck around. So I think both my kids have the life, really. There's, I think they re realize it to a point, but they won't realize how good they have until they get older. So I would swap places with one of my kids. Ooh. And what's so far, what's the most memorable lesson you've learned from them so far? From them? Oh, to be patient and stuff. I tried teaching Jaden, my seven-year-old, like how to read and also how to tie sh shoelaces and stuff. And because we already know it and we haven't been through the teacher training and stuff like that, we don't know how to teach as well as a teacher would. So I found myself getting frustrated that he couldn't like pronounce some of these words, which really the English English, the English language is pretty bad. Like the way things are written is not how it's sounded out. So I probably got frustrated maybe more at myself as well. I'm trying to help them learn and the words don't even make sense really. We just know them because they're sight words. We've been taught that. So trying to teach him, I found it hard to teach him and I was getting frustrated, but then he taught me a lesson after I tried to teach him those words and also how to tie his shoelaces. And I was getting frustrated we sat on the couch and he was playing this computer game and he's really good at it and I suck at it. And he kind of like, oh, he tried to tell me what to do, but I could see, he was smart. I could see what he was doing, but he didn't get frustrated at me. He was trying to tell me, but then he kept telling me, kept telling me just to show how I was acting before. So I was like, oh, good one. So yeah, he's told me, he's like, just go calm down a bit, relax a bit while you're trying to teach somebody else something. So, yeah, that's what that's what he taught me. Like, I've got to be a bit more patient and realize everybody learns at different speeds and how would I like it? How would I like it if somebody was teach me the way that I was teaching them? Yeah, so that's Maybe. a pretty good lesson. Very good. Last question, ready? Yeah. Let's do it, let's one. Right, so before the last question, tell me for you, um, you know, when you're writing your books, yeah? Tell me what was the most difficult part for you to put all together, yeah? And uh, for you, uh, what was the most enjoyable part? So just putting the story together, making it sound all fun and exciting because I don't want people to get bored. So like, it's quite punchy throughout the whole book. So writing the story was probably the best part. The not best part was probably I had to proofread it over and over because I didn't want to pay the money to get somebody else to do it. So I was kind of sick of reading it after I read it like 15 times just to try to find spelling mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably that's probably my answer. I see. Okay. Let's question these. What can make you cry and what can make you really happy? Well, apparently, talking about my kids and what I'm proud of with them will make me cry, as we just found out, whether you edit it out or not. I don't know, but apparently that. Oh, and nice. what, what was it? Yeah, what was the other question? What doesn't make me cry? What makes you really happy? Really happy? Oh, yeah. Doing fun stuff with my kids? Um, yeah, probably the kids thing. Like doing something oh. fun with them or 
at work, I laugh a lot. Just like when when we're with my workmates and we take the piss out of each other, like we joke around and stuff. That's pretty good fun. Yeah. Or if I'm mucking around with my wife, I can't think of an example. But like if we do something fun or funny together or something, that that would probably make me really happy as well. Oh, yeah. Sweet. I can see her smiling now. Right, uh, watch this interview. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll make her watch it just for that. <laughs> just get the brownie points. Right, so then, yet let's play now the word association game. Okay, I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? Okay, let's start with money. Uh, memories. Family. Everything. Love. Everything. Oh, can I use the same word? That's for different yes. words. Okay. Yeah, uh, main thing. Okay. One word for life. Enjoyable. Sex. Pleasurable. Politics. A joke. Religion. To each their own. Fear. Embrace. Friendship. Important. Desire. You have to control it. Regret. Part of life. Success. Is in the eyes of the beholder. Wish. I've got goal. Like you have to set a goal if you want to achieve that wish. Happiness is up to the person whether they want to be happy or not. A One choice. It's a choice. Wait. Sorry. Oh, it's uh, a choice. So it's a choice whether you're happy or not. I see. Um, one word for Australia. Best country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> If you are saying, and the last one now, one, <laughs> the last one now, one word for uh, your books. If you could define all of them in one word, what that would be? Hilarious. Amazing. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your wife for a coffee, and I'm going to ask her, define arrow in one positive word and one negative word only. What should say? A oh, good father and husband, and. Negative, probably thinks he's funny when he's not. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Let's play now Errol in the match box and you can ask me a question. Okay, Errol, you can ask me a question now. Climate change, is it just a money grabbing thing or do you think the government's actually trying to make a real difference? Wow, what a what a question. Good question, actually. I never thought about that. Um, you put me in spot now, Errol, and I can tell you, I think, um, I just hope, I just hope that, uh, you know, it comes from a good place. I hope that whatever they are doing, whatever, there's something behind. I just hope that, you know, all of that, it's about saving the world, you know. Um, it's something about their for their personal reasons, you know, anything could be. I just hope it's not just hope that uh, everything they are doing, it's something, uh, you know, for the world. I might be wrong, but I just hope, yeah. I just hope that it's something that uh, it's about saving the world. I, yeah, that's my answer to you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy it's a good political answer, now. you like that? That's a safe answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I just hope so. You know, I just hope. I think, you know, I think all of us, we have um, a part on it. You know, it's funny enough today, I was talking to my mom about it, that, you know, we went to buy something and this lady was giving us um, just a little thing. And she was like, oh, can I put the bag? I was like, oh, no, no, I can't keep this. I, I don't need the bag. You know, I just think like whatever you can make, help somehow not to you know, to carry the things or to somehow save the world. It's up to us as well. I think we can we can leave, give our parts. 
It's not about people doing something, it's about us as well. We need to always remember how can we do to improve about saving the world. It could be anything, it could be a small thing that I, I did today, you know, I, and I mentioned that. I said, oh, I don't need this bag. Why am I going to get something that I don't need it? So let's keep it and save it somehow. So that's it. So I just hope all of us, if you have if you have this uh, mindset of saving the world, doesn't matter how, but I think we can get somewhere if we have something to con contrib contribute to it. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy the interview? Yeah, it's good. Cheers for that. Then, when, yeah. Before you go, Aaron, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Yep, create memories. You've only really got one life that we know of. What happens, we're not 100% on. So basically create good memories, be a good person, and just enjoy life. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks so much. Regards to your family and you keep in touch. Okay, it was a pleasure. All right? All right, thanks, William. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. So did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.